Some of you probably didn't like that title, or that thumbnail, or this video, but I just cannot resist. Thank you for coming to this Tomato Talk. And a shout out to my newest patron, Procyon Storm, and my newest YouTube channel members, Genie360, Toter Kenny, and Very Off Blue. I recently had a talk with InfoRunners about this general topic, and it was pretty good. You guys should go check it out. It's on their YouTube page and linked down in the video description. Now, we had some great conversations over there, but I'd also like to publish my own video of me just kind of talking it out with you guys on a more candid level. If you're not into that, well, you can go check out my new cinematic. But if you are, a while ago, CIG published a hour and a half video, which had them producing the hypothetical schedule for a big feature, showing all the nastiness that goes into the process in a simplified form. Quick disclaimer, I was an engineer before this in a large industrial firm, and I was able to see firsthand how these kinds of large projects can be handled from the office next door. We've had a multi-billion dollar product launch that missed its deadline by a few years. And we're talking a pretty substantial product in the greater scheme of things. Easily 10 times the value of Star Citizen. Nobody died. No companies were closed. Everybody moved on because these things happen. The James Webb Space Telescope, the California Bullet Train, the F-35, modular phones, Windows Vista, the Galaxy Note 7, Avatar, Peace in the Middle East, you guys get the point. It's nothing really new. Anyways, we should probably get back to the video I was talking about. We start off the process of planning out the feature development with an incredibly powerful industry standard tool that allows for some pretty incredible and groundbreaking progress. Microsoft Excel. No, really, the process starts with defining which teams are going to be involved with the feature development. It's here that we reach the first conundrum. When you need multiple teams to work on a feature, you realize that those teams are all working on their own things. Imagine you have to make a cake, and every part of that cake is the responsibility of a different department in your company in a different building. It's not a fun cake to make. It's gonna be all stale and stuff and just yeah. so you figure out which departments are involved which is based on the scope of the feature so if the scope ever increases because say another feature went into more depth or you realize down the line that the feature you're working on no longer falls in line with the quality of the game you might have to bring on new teams so now the bread of the cake is god tier but that frosting is kind of meh so now you gotta bring in the fluffy frosting guys, right? You get what I'm saying. So as you're going through this process, you're developing a design brief from a high level perspective, asking those important questions about the scale of the project, the tasks that are gonna be needed, etc. Once this is done, you'll have to have multiple levels of management review that design brief, going all the way up the ladder to the top. And you'll see this happening quite a bit. Now, after the design process has been laid out, you move on to figuring out all the different teams you'll need and what work they might have to do. Now, in a perfect scenario, these teams would all work in a linear fashion, but nothing is perfect. That being said, for the sake of simplicity, just for now, we're gonna assume it was perfect. So, on to art we go. This is generally concept art at this stage. Now, we know CIG is great when it comes to concept art, but due to the scale of the game, there are a lot of layers to it. They have to have exterior art, interior art, long distance art, close up art, all kinds of art is created for any physical object going into the game because those objects will be designed for and viewed at all kinds of different distances and angles when in the game. Continuing along the theme of objects, in-game designers will need to make high poly and in-game models for the items, as well as level of design features, texturing and materials, and of course, a final review will need to be done by multiple people before we can move on. And now, art is complete. Next, we move on to tech art, starting with the research and development phase. 
developing the technology, practices, or tools needed to create the needed feature or object. Because the engine has been in development throughout the dev process, this has been difficult to do as the possibilities are constantly increasing or stagnating. Whereas building a game on a uh, complete engine has a decent possibilities list already designed for you to know what you can do. From here you move on to things like rigging in game, skinning in simulation, and technical setup for various options and features that will be incorporated into the object in question. After all this, yet another review by multiple management personnel is required before moving forward from tech art. Are you guys starting to see a pattern here? When I get to this point I think to myself, okay crap, well if the object gets to tech art, and they realize working things out that something doesn't work based on the actual concept itself, do they send it all the way back to the concept artists and tell them to rework it? Because that's a lot of time and wasted effort. Anyways, back to the process. With tech art finishing the locomotion properties of the object, somebody now needs to animate it. This animation would include things like facial animations, hit reactions, ship transformations, and well, all that other kind of stuff. And then yet, Another review. And then what brings the ultimate immersion? Yeah, audio. Every object has to go through audio design and then creation and then implementation and then bug fixing, and then, give it to me. Another review process. And then after audio is done, we move on to VFX. And this is where you get things like sparks, smoke, explosions, lighting, shaders, and all that pretty shiny jazz. These effects need to be created, sometimes with their own R&D, such as the fog tech, cloud tech, or procedural damage effects. After the R&D and creation of these effects is done, they then need to be implemented which includes crushing all the bugs that pop up within them. This then gets passed, guess what, to another review team. At this point, the engineering team comes in to make sure everything works correctly and implement the features into larger overarching systems like Quantum, the Renderer, or anything else that touches most of the game. Then QA takes the reins, works the bugs out, and passes it on to us for final testing. At the end of all of this, you kind of got a lot that went into each feature. You got about 80 days or so of work to do, or 640 man hours, or an average of about $20,000 for one feature in a line of many. And that doesn't include the other employees that work at the company and the overhead of maintaining all those studios. So it gets to be an expensive process. Now, even after you get this schedule of work that needs to be done, you then need to assign all the members to their roles. And all those people could be working on different things. And some of those things are more important than others. Sorry, Banu Merchant Man owners. So all these people could at any point be required to drop what they're doing elsewhere and come back to this feature because something broke down the line and they need to fix the dependencies. Because, well, a lot of these tasks need to be finished before others can start. In the end, this scenario, like I said, is a best case scenario, but things happen. People get sick, things break, a different feature makes a breakthrough and requires additional work, your feature hits a roadblock and needs additional R&D or engineering or eye cash, a pandemic could break out. And on top of that, devs are optimistic, entrepreneurs are optimistic, Chris Roberts is optimistic, probably too much so, and he and his staff are also in large part perfectionists, so yes. There are issues with the development process, and mistakes are made. A lot. But even given the best case scenario, if nobody was being optimistic, let's be honest, it's a business, their best interest is to be optimistic. Nobody got delayed or pulled away from their work, and things were allowed to be rough upon implementation. We're already talking about multiple months and hundreds of hours worth of work for a single feature. Every single feature that you see on the roadmap has this breakdown and some are more thorough than others. Keep in mind, even some of the tasks for these features have their own breakdowns as well. It's breakdowns all the way down. The best way for me to visualize game development given this sort of explanation is that 
A game studio is a company producing products, and each of these features is one of those products. They go down the factory line getting all of their work done, and then they're shipped out the other side. At the end of the day, each of these products that comes out of the factory need to work together. All of this complexity and uncertainty no doubt leads to slips and deadlines being missed, and things taking too long, and CIG making the wrong call, and it may be why other games are often delayed, bastardized, prematurely released, abandoned, or disappointing upon reveal. Because project development is hard. That being said, CIG has made a ton of money. And given the time it's taken for them to get everything up and running, I would hope that progress would be more constant at this point. And the fact that it still isn't happening in a full open format is disappointing, and adds to the sentiment that a lot has gone wrong. Now if you want to dwell on the past and be mad about that, that's your choice. But we have a ton of info that helps us to understand why things tend to not go well and why most game devs decide to avoid taking on this task in the way CIG has. And we can also accept that to some extent we just don't have the context, insight, or understanding to make the call on how long these features should be taking. That doesn't mean we can't be annoyed, but I think we should keep that thought process when considering our complaints and criticisms. CIG, though, should also consider that in regards to their messaging and communication. <laughs> don't, don't get me started on that. The fact that we don't understand everything means they need to do their best to help us to do so. And selective silence doesn't help in that situation. I just wanted to get all of this out there. It's my opinion. It's kind of a rant, and I'm not saying whether it's right or wrong or you should agree or disagree. It's just something that I wanted to say. I don't believe CIG is spotless in this, but I also believe that us, the community, could do a little bit more to try and understand everything that's going on behind the scenes using the information we have at our disposal. That's why I'm providing this context that I've found. My goal as a content creator is to deliver as much content, information, and entertainment to the widest amount of people in a quality manner. Not to tell you how to make up your mind. If you like that, or enjoyed this more candid talk, I'd like to suggest you subscribe to the channel, like the video, and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments if you liked it, or if you didn't like it. Dislike it, and tell me in the comments why. Catch me on Twitch as well, where you can hear me have more candid discussions and opinions like this, and join my Discord server to hang out and play various games with the garden. We also host giveaways over there, as well as here on YouTube and on Twitch. All of this stuff is in the video description if you want to see it. And as always, thank you for watching this video, and I'll catch you in the next one.